So I was at work a few days ago and we usually have the radio on and I kind of tune it out and just get on with what I'm doing. But suddenly I heard on the news that there was an announcement about gaming and I was kind of like, you don't hear that very often on, you know, mainstream BBC news. What's about to go on? So I kind of stopped what I was doing and started listening properly. And it was announced that Microsoft has purchased Activision Blizzard for the tune of $68.7 billion. Dollars, <laughs> okay, um, which is quite a lot of money. <laughs> so um, I thought we would just make a quick video and talk about that. And I just kind of want to do a kind of off the cuff my thoughts and what this means. Um, I didn't want to do it right away because the news came out and everyone kind of went, "Oh my god!" But like there were so many questions that we didn't really have any answers for them. But now the dust has settled a little bit and we do have some answers so I feel like I can make a more informed video but yeah I just want to talk about that so let's be brutally honest here and I say to say this as a guy who loved his Xbox 360 Microsoft did not have a very good run last gen with the Xbox one the PS4 had a really great time with a lot of really great games the Xbox not so much now don't get me wrong there were some good bits the backwards compatibility compatibility sorry was great um more recently the launch of game pass has proved to be hugely successful and very consumer friendly i'm not saying xbox hasn't had some good moments but exclusive wise things just haven't really gone xbox's way it really got to the point where i was kind of under the impression personally that microsoft was kind of getting tired of having its own console and what with a lot of xbox exclusives going to pc i kind of thought maybe it was going to start focusing on just making hardware or, or games rather than hardware in the form of consoles so, so that was where i kind of thought things were going now don't get me wrong microsoft has recently been purchasing quite a lot of studios over the past few years which isn't hugely noteworthy in itself so has sony and you know companies do that um, it's not that weird but um, Microsoft certainly made a lot of news when some years back you may remember they bought Minecraft and they made a lot of news when just uh, quite recently they purchased Bethesda who obviously are most well known for creating the Elder Scrolls games and the Fallout games and you know that was a pretty big deal um, but at the same time it wasn't like a game changer it was big don't get me wrong it was big and you know there were certainly questions about you know does that mean you'll need an xbox to play the next elder scrolls or fallout um but you know it wasn't it wasn't as groundbreaking as this let's be honest um so yeah it it it's quite a a game changer <laughs> what's happened now because i really don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this could be the biggest gaming news in my lifetime certainly probably the biggest gaming news since it was announced microsoft was going to get into console gaming um so yeah so what does this mean what does microsoft own once the purchase goes through and it owns activision well activision in itself is an enormous company it owns some of the biggest ips in gaming i really struggle to think apart from sony nintendo and microsoft and maybe EA, I struggle to think of any company as big in the gaming world as Activision. So Activision owns Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, Overwatch and Candy Crush. As well as IP such as Guitar Hero, uh, the Tony Hawk series and former PlayStation exclusive franchises Spyro and Crash Bandicoot which back in like the original PlayStation games were pretty much mascots for Sony which is kind of ironic now that Microsoft will own all those IPs those those video games which is pretty massive those are some of the biggest video games currently around I mean Call of Duty has just been printing money since 2007 basically yeah so, so Microsoft basically just bought itself a massive library of games and the question is what are they going to do with them does that mean microsoft is going to make all these games exclusive to microsoft pc gaming and the xbox console 
it looks like it might. I'm sorry, uh, fans who are on uh, PlayStation and Nintendo. You just don't spend that kind of money and then go, yeah, everyone can have a piece of the cake. That's not how it works. Now, to be fair to Microsoft, it has shown in the past that it, it isn't as uh, militant in keeping the stuff it owns exclusive to Xbox and to, to Microsoft. It, for instance, you know, when it originally bought Minecraft, there were people terrified that Minecraft would suddenly become exclusive to the Xbox and that you wouldn't be able to play it on PlayStation or, or Steam or Nintendo, which hasn't been the case. And, you, you know, some people even thought there'd be Minecraft 2, which would be exclusive. That never happened either. I Not a huge amount has changed if you're a Minecraft fan, but you don't have an Xbox um, or, or Windows Gaming. Um, again, when Microsoft originally bought Bethesda, Deathloop was in the process of being a time PS4 exclusive, and Microsoft had to honour that contract, and Deathloop was released on the PS4, it, even though Microsoft owned it by the time that point came. But, you know, contracts were already in motion, and they had to be honoured. So, Minecraft isn't... Uh, Minecraft, sorry, Microsoft isn't quite as militant as you might imagine it could be, when it comes to its exclusives. However, 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 it has been announced since Microsoft purchased Bethesda that The Elder Scrolls VI and the upcoming game Starfield from Bethesda, the long-awaited game, will be exclusive to Microsoft. Those games at the moment will not be available on places like Steam, Nintendo, PlayStation. You will have to go to the Windows Store if you want to play it on PC or have an Xbox. So, Microsoft has started to lean into having exclusivity, uh, you know, in the same way Nintendo and PlayStation does with things like God of War or Mario, which, look, I, as, a, as someone who doesn't have a way to game via Microsoft, it bums me out that I, I'm going to have to put an effort in or spend some money if I want to be able to play something like StarCraft, and especially with this Activision um, purchase, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to start looking at a way to uh, to play Microsoft games because there's going to be stuff I'm going to want to play. But I don't think you can really villainize, villainize Activision. Um, sorry, I don't think you could really villainize Microsoft for doing that. They own these IPs. They, they have the right. It's perfectly legal for them to make them exclusive. And that's what you do. I mean, it's... Unfortunately, it's capitalism. In a perfect world, all games will be available on all platforms, but that's just not how it works. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can't really throw shade at Microsoft for doing this. They are doing what I would do if I was in charge of Microsoft. I've got to be honest. Uh, money talks, and they've got a platform to sell, and they've just spent almost $100 billion um, purchasing... Activision and all these video games and I mean who can blame them for, for then for then using the advantage that gives them once the purchase goes through I believe Microsoft will be the third largest gaming company in terms of revenue behind Tencent and Sony so Sony is still up there um, a lot of people have been kind of um, freaking out especially PlayStation gamers go like is this the end? <laughs> Has Microsoft just won completely out of nowhere? Is this the end of the console wars? Um, no, I don't think you need to panic yet. Yes, it's not great news if you're someone who games exclusively on the PlayStation, but look, Sony has been crushing it with the PlayStation recently, and I, they're not just going to be thrown out of the competition overnight. They're going to need to be careful now. Uh, Microsoft is a um, trillion dollar company, from what I understand, whereas um, you know PlayStation and Sony is a billion dollar. So Microsoft has the edge when it comes to money. But again, with the, the, the first party lineup that Sony has and the exclusives it's had and the just amazing you know time it had with the PlayStation 4, I don't think you should be counting PlayStation out just yet. I think... Um, it, it, the competition is still hot and there's still everything to fight for there are some people out there who have uh, voiced concern and i think these are really legitimate concerns that microsoft is basically becoming like disney in the sense that it's just buying everything like how you know um 
Disney owns Marvel and Star Wars and just about everything and I, the only things it needs to own now to own everything is like Warner Bros and, <laughs> and stuff like that and then get you know some of that Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings stuff in there that is a legitimate concern I, I don't like big corporations I don't like monopolies it, it, it is bad when one company owns everything competition between companies is good for us the consumer okay so so yeah i'm not thrilled about this news but i i've got to say microsoft isn't the worst company that could have done this okay they're they're you know when you think of terrible companies especially in video games you think of ea you think of activision you think of ubisoft microsoft in terms of the way it treats people I, I don't think it's so bad. <laughs> like I don't work there, obviously, so I, I, I don't have any first-hand experience. I'm sure there are people who have and do work there who aren't having a great time. I'm sure, I'm sure there are horror stories, unfortunately, as there seems to be in every aspect of big corporations. But Microsoft is is not a bad guy or not considered to be the bad guy. It's made some terrible decisions throughout uh, its career in gaming. Um, terrible and i hate the fact that like it normalized um you know paying for online play and stuff like that but like compared to some of the scummy practices done by other companies microsoft looks pretty good um now obviously when it comes to competition in console gaming having exclusives for your consoles is you know a must i mean that's just what you need in order to sell your consoles you can have the best console in the world the most powerful one but if you haven't got great games for people to play then what's the point okay now as i said earlier microsoft has struggled with this in the last generation yes it, ha it has franchises like halo which is great and all but halo let's be honest is not as popular as it was back in the xbox 360 days it doesn't shift units like that and the new IPs that Microsoft has tried recently, things like ReCore and, and um, things like that, Rise, Son of Rome was, I never played that, but that was like a, was it a launch title for the Xbox One? I forget. But anyway, when you consider with the Xbox 360, you have things like Gears of War that just became like almost as big as Halo, and you had Halo 3, and with the original Xbox, the, the launch of Halo and the start, it was huge. Whereas Microsoft has really struggled with that lately. They've struggled to have games where it's like, this is why you should own an Xbox over a PlayStation or a Nintendo. Meanwhile, PlayStation and Nintendo have had just hit after hit. PlayStation's had Bloodborne, God of War, Horizon, um, The Last of Us, you know, um, Nintendo. I mean, I don't even need to say Nintendo. They, they just... Mario, you know, they have everything. Um, Zelda, you know, they, they have these massive hitters where it's like you're going to buy a Nintendo console because you want to play Breath of the Wild. Do you know what I mean? So Microsoft really has needed some great exclusives. And now it has them. It has things like Call of Duty and Overwatch and Hearthstone, which you couldn't ask for bigger exclusives. But here's the danger, right? That's really good. And for a short amount of time, we'll just probably print the money, whatever they do. They could just release any old crap and it'll, it'll print the money. However, they need to be careful because these franchises have massive fan bases who are extremely protective over, <laughs> over this thing that they love. And Microsoft better be careful that when they put out games, they are good games and that they do not screw over the fans, okay? So, yeah, in one way, one way Microsoft has, has gained all of these, almost overnight, all of these incredible IPs, all of these exclusives for its, its ecosystem, but that comes with, it's a double-edged sword, it comes with the danger of the fact that these are established franchises that people have expectations of and that Microsoft, you know, better not screw this opportunity up. It's an incredible opportunity but they need to be careful. It's also worth noting, I touched on this earlier about scummy video game companies, Blizzard is kind of a mess right now, as is Activision in general. If you pay attention to gaming news, you'll probably have heard there have been awful horror stories coming out about the way employees have been treated working there, to the point where things, you know, not even bad stuff happening, but bad things have been covered up in order to protect the you know important higher-ups in the company 
and everyday people have been screwed over working there it, like to the point where you know the government's been starting to pay attention and stuff like it's seriously messed up and if there's one good thing i really hope can come out of this i hope that microsoft acquiring activision and blizzard will create a better working environment for the people there and maybe even give them some justice hopefully some people will be held accountable many big gaming companies including yeah, including microsoft have um, condemned activision blizzard for the stories that have come out and i really hope microsoft you know puts its money where its mouth is and and makes things better for the employees who work there as i say i i can't personally think of any horror stories i've read recently about working for microsoft it seems like as far as the video gaming industry goes which means a lot could be desired it it seems like it's pretty okay based by the current standards um you know i feel like horror stories are coming out everywhere in the video game industry at the moment and things do need to change systematically but but i really hope that this is positive for the people who've been affected working at activision blizzard because some of the things i've heard have just been terrible and yeah i hope microsoft looks into that and and you know replaces who needs replacing and makes for just a better safer working space for the employees i i really hope that is the case um so um what does this mean now for xbox let's say xbox plays its cards right and it makes these franchises exclusive um phil spencer has said um i believe that he he intends for now to to honor exclusivity and sony has also said i believe with the wall street journal it said that for now multi-platform ex um, titles will remain multi-platform now i said for now <laughs> several times there because the main reason this is the case that the multi-platform titles now owned by microsoft will remain multi-platform is because they have to be due to contracts and microsoft is basically saying yeah we're gonna honor that contract because they would be inviting lawsuits if they didn't so so yeah it might take a few years for us to notice um this acquisition and for the next few years many of these ips will still be available on multiple platforms but i don't know i mean let's say that in a few years time the next call of duty is exclusive to xbox and windows gaming um you know a new overwatch sequel is let's i mean they're working on an overwatch sequel now let's say that that is exclusive to windows gaming and xbox does that mean that xbox will now be the place to go for gamers quite possibly if they don't screw it up if they release games to the standard people expect from those franchises then yeah xbox could become an amazing place for gamers not to mention xbox also has game pass which look even as someone who isn't the biggest fan of xbox i will say is incredible value for gamers it's basically netflix and it's very reasonably reasonably priced and like there are games that will be on there the day they launch big triple a games like i don't have an xbox but if i did i would have game pass it's really good value you have a huge selection of games and like i don't know why you wouldn't have that if you own if you're an xbox gamer it's really good um and yeah sony has playstation now which isn't as good um nintendo kind of is really weird with backwards compatibility and they haven't been too popular recently for the pricing of you know being able to play their back catalog it, it could be that people's opinion changes and that you know when it comes to value for money for consumers people go yeah go with xbox because they've got great exclusives and you're able to play them at an amazing price through their game pass especially if you're on xbox so yeah i mean it, if microsoft plays its cards right it could become the the go-to guy for gaming um what have i got written next on my uh, <laughs> notes behind the camera um so yeah how will sony respond to this well as i said earlier sony isn't completely terrified um sony has had a great run recently it's not going to be knocked out of this competition just like that um it, it is true that when the news broke of this um sony lost uh how much was it 
20 billion dollars <laughs> off its market value overnight <laughs> now uh, that's not good obviously but that's perfectly that sort of thing happens when news like this breaks um sony can quite easily bring that back given how many great exclusives sony has lined up just this year alone the new horizon god of war 2 i'd say that they're gonna earn that back fairly quickly I, d I don't think that's quite as big a news as people are making out it's not good certainly but when you're a massive corporation like sony you could afford 20 billion dollars um and that's not literally like you know it's it, it's not as bad as it sounds like that's recoverable for sure for sony um but yeah how will sony respond from this sony has itself been buying up um third party studios and i do wonder if it, it's going to change tactic from here on out. And what I mean by that is recently we've seen quite a lot of um, PlayStation exclusives going to PC. Most recently, just recently, God of War was released on the, the PC, um, which is good because I'm all for, for um, games being available on multiple platforms. I'm not a fanboy of any company. But I do wonder if that will change now that this news has come about. It seemed like Sony wanted to dip its toe into letting some of its exclusives go out into the wild. I wonder if they might start to backtrack on that and be like, okay, no, now now they realise they're having to compete with Microsoft with all these IPs that are going to be exclusive to Microsoft. They're going to be like, no, um, God of War 2 will not be going on to PC. You know, um, say Bloodborne 2 comes out, that won't be coming to, to PC. I think that's fair to imagine that might well happen. Or maybe they'll go with a different strategy. Maybe they hope that by uh, opening up their ecosystem, that will attract more gamers to them and give them more money and help them better compete. Who knows? That is hard to say. Uh, that's about it. I mean, yeah, that's the news. <laughs> and it's pretty big. And it's going to have a huge impact on, on gaming. I mean... Yeah, like I, I, so I game on PC, I game on my PlayStation, and I have a Switch for, for Nintendo titles. Look, I'm not at all someone who enjoys bashing other consoles. If you're a huge Xbox gamer, fair play to you, enjoy, have a great time. This news to me is like, obviously, I as a gamer, I want to be able to play Starfield. I, I want to be able to play The Elder Scrolls Six when it eventually comes out. I want to be able to play Fallout five you know so yeah i mean this news kind of says to me like you better start thinking about getting into uh microsoft's sphere of gaming because before now i didn't really feel like i needed to that as i say microsoft's exclusives hadn't been that great recently i'm not saying they didn't have some but there was nothing that really was a system seller to me or made me think like yeah i need to go onto windows gaming so i so i can play that game there was nothing where i was like i need to play that not like Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey, which convinced me to get a Switch. So that looks like it might be changing. And yeah, I might start looking at, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, either upgrading my PC so I can play the new AAA games that come out from Microsoft or maybe getting, I can't even remember the name of their new Xbox, the Xbox One. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, I hate the way they name their consoles. I'm sorry at Microsoft, but you, know, you name your consoles, they suck. I can never keep them all in order in my head. But yeah, so, and if I'm thinking that, then I can't be the only one, um, which just proves that Microsoft is already starting to reap the rewards of, of the money it's spent. That said, um, <laughs> they've spent over $60 billion. That is a huge amount of money, even for Microsoft. You know, Microsoft's investors will be looking to see a return on that. You do not spend over $60 billion and just go, yeah, there we go. We, we spent that money. Nothing really came of it. The pressure is on for Xbox, okay? They, they have made an incredible acquisition here, but that's not the end of the story. They need to then double down and use these IPs to their benefit, create amazing games, and prove that they can still do that. Because let's be honest, a lot of exclusive games... For the xbox recently they just haven't been on par with things like god of war or breath of the wild so i hope microsoft is able to to achieve that level of quality it has done in the past with things like you know 
the Gears of War, Halo 3, you know, Microsoft has had some incredible games, the, you know, early Fables. So, yeah, we'll see. They just need to make sure they, they also have the talent to, to push these games and create these new games, as well as the license to own these games. So, yeah, pretty exciting times. Um, I mean, as someone who's interested in the industry, I find this fascinating and i can't wait to see how this changes things because this is a big shake up this is as i said the biggest news i've heard in many many years so yeah i <laughs> i'm uh, i'm i hope it's good um i think the one thing we can take away from all this the one thing wherever you stand on all this the one thing we can all be hopeful for is that competition is good for the consumer and you know nintendo and sony had kind of got to a point i feel recently where they could kind of do whatever they wanted and especially with nintendo with it's like you know that new pass it released recently that was really overpriced and people hated it they can kind of do that because who are they really competing with whereas you know if everyone's on an even playing field now they're gonna have to start vying for our attention and offering us good value for gaming and good value for money which is good okay so hopefully this this works well for us the consumer and remember to always vote with your wallet if you don't like the way a company is behaving you don't like their sales tactics then don't buy their product that's the best message you can send out as a consumer so yeah um this is big news i i hope you enjoyed this video i know it's a bit long i tried to keep it condensed but i'm kind of excited um please let me know what you think in the comments i'd be really here to i for, i'd be really interested to hear your thoughts if i've missed anything or anything or any details please let me know i want to know as much about this as i can and yeah just let me know what you think i'll see you guys next time thanks a lot